Jeremy said, praise drowns out a spirit of complaining. Uh, one really refreshing thing and very uplifting thing that I've found to do is uh, to spend time praising God for my family and the Lord and uh, thanking him for the people that he's put in my life and remembering how he's sovereignly brought these people into my life and working through them um, for me and for the church and it's and what a blessing they've been and um, so I've found that personally to be very uplifting every time I've done it I've I don't do this as much as I should and I often forget to do it but um, I was reminded of it again as I was reading through second Thessalonians this week and I noticed that Paul uh, said something twice he said to the Thessalonians we, sh we should always give thanks to God for you. He said that twice. In chapter 1, verse 3, he said, We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as is only fitting because your faith is greatly enlarged and the love of each one of you toward one another grows even greater and greater. And then in chapter 2 of Second uh, Thessalonians, verse 13, he said, but we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification. <clears throat> so that kind of gave me a picture of Paul's prayers. And it reminded me that Paul's almost always says something like that to the churches that he's writing to. He's constantly giving thanks to God for them. He said that uh, it would be amazing to be able to go back and hear Paul pray or to uh, hear how what his burden was like or what he was praying for. But I think one thing that's pretty clear in the Bible was that many of Paul's prayers were just him pouring out thanks to God for his family in the Lord. And it's a very simple thing, but he starts out so many epistles with that very word. I'll just read some. Romans chapter 1 verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. 1 Corinthians 1 4. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus. Philippians 1 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. Colossians 1 3. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. 1 Thessalonians 1 2. We give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers. 2 Timothy 1 3. I thank God, whom I serve with a clear conscience, the way my forefathers did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. Philemon 1 4 through 5. I thank my God always, making mention of you in my prayers, because I, I hear of your love and of the faith which, which you have towards the Lord Jesus and all the saints. Paul was constantly praising God for his family in the Lord. and uh, it's amazing. I don't think he was. this was just uh, uh, some routine intro that he wrote to everybody, but he actually meant it. He said, I'm always thanking God for you. I always think of you um, in my prayers, and I praise God for you. I, I pour out myself and say, God, thank you for these brothers and sisters that you've put in my life and what you're doing in their life. And my goal is that more of my prayers can be like that, um, as Jeremy was saying, more praising and um, thinking of how my the people that God has given me in my life have been a great they're a great gift from the Lord that God's given me. A lot of times I don't know what to pray, but this gives me something that's so easy to do and so enjoyable to thank God and meditate on how He's brought these people into my life. When I think back, it's uh, amazing to think how ten years ago I didn't know any of you, uh, including my own wife and. Though my, it's a totally different life now, just within the span of 10 years that I never expected, but I'm so thankful. And when I think of the path that God has brought me down to bring me where I am today with the people that I am at, I just, uh, it brings such an uplifting heart of joy in my life. Just, Lord, thank you. I praise you, Lord. I know I, I knew you already, but um, I can't imagine uh, not uh, having what I have today in all of you and in my, my family. And so, um, yeah, when I when I usually think of praying for people, I think, okay, let, um, what are the burdens? Like, uh, uh, what are the burdens in the church? What are the problems that I need to uplift? Um, but that's only half half of the coin. I think I should now. Now I want to.
spend more time also on the other half of the coin, which is let me praise the good things that God's doing um, in the church and in my brothers and sisters. And I've all and I've always found that to be a huge blessing. And just sometimes I've just felt felt so down, but that I've the times that I have done it, it's just lifted me up, thinking what God has done. And I, I've noticed that I can even be thankful and praise God for the differences I have with others, because not everything is so easy. Like not every person in my life, not every. Um, uh, situation in life with another person is something good to praise God about. But I realize uh, that I can actually praise God about it. It is good uh, if I look at it with the right perspective because God's using them to sharpen me in a lot of ways. Um, when Jess and I were first married, uh, it was, wasn't long before we found out that we had a lot of differences. And uh, <laughs> marriage is an eye opener and we um, we found things were a bit rough. And I think the, the thought in both of our minds was, uh, I wish he was like this. I wish she was like that. I wish she was the same as me in this area. I wish we agreed on this. Marriage is so hard. Uh, but now looking back, I see that those differences are the very things that God was using to help us grow more like Jesus. And if it ha uh, we grew more through those differences than we ever would have if we just agreed in everything. And so now I honestly can say that I genuinely praise God with all my heart for the differences that her and I have, because I see they made me more like Jesus than I ever would have been if they weren't there. And uh, so I believe that God sovereignly uh, chooses um, many differences in the other spouse. Specific, he does it. He could, if he wanted to, he could have made given me a spouse that was exactly like me, but it would have been so unfruitful. Um, and so I can I. Honestly, I praise God for uh, those differences now, and um, I see that God was using them to purify me and, and her, and we're better because of each other through that. When, when I was this kid, I wanted this thing called a rock tumbler. Uh, it's, if you know what a rock tumbler is, it's like a cement truck where um, it's a little device that um, the kids have. They, uh, you plug it into the wall and it's like a cement mixer that just spins constantly for 24 hours a day for like uh, a, a, month, a month or two. And you take rocks and you put them in there. Uh, you can take two rocks and they're all rough. Right, they have all these rough edges and sharp edges, um, and then you leave it there for two months, and you come back afterwards, and you turn it off, and you take out two smooth rocks. Uh, it was all that friction, constantly friction, 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 rough edge, rough edge, hitting across each other, and all of a sudden, eventually, they're smooth. Uh, and I see marriage is a rock tumbler, <laughs> and uh, the the problems that we wish we didn't have with our spouse so many of them are just what they are is friction of one rough edge polishing out another rough edge um and so i believe that's why god finds it very fitting to choose in, many, in a lot of cases incompatible spouses <laughs> um because uh that's what he his goal isn't uh um just a marriage of ease, but his goal is to teach us to not deny ourselves. And um, if Jessica <clears throat> liked exactly the same things as me, uh, she wouldn't have to deny herself. I wouldn't have to deny myself. But since we like very different things, we both have to deny ourselves, and that's uh, a much better thing um, than if we would have just had so such ease the whole way through. And so, I found that. Um, it's very enjoyable also to spend time thanking God. Lord, thank you for what you're doing uh, in my brothers and sisters and through them uh, for me. It's a very enjoyable thing and uh, it helps me to appreciate them more. Uh, I, I, can, I could not start out my marriage praising God for the rough, ed rough edges, that the differences that Jess and I have, but now I can and I'm really... Um, thankful for it. And it's, it's very easy. It's just find something that I can appreciate in someone and then praise God for it. Just as simple as that. Thank God for it. Think about it. And I've, I found that God has given me revelation on things that I never would have thought of um, if I hadn't spent time just thanking God for people. He It helps. Uh, I believe it will help prevent sins like bitterness and gossip uh, when I take time to do that. And it will help me grow in love for other people when I take the time to do that because he helps me to appreciate the more as I uh, pray that prayer. Lord, thank you for thank you for this person. Thank you for what you're doing in their life. They, they love you. They're seeking you. I've been blessed by looking at their example. I've been, uh, you helped me grow through this difficult situation. Thank you, Father. Um, 
And so I picture Paul constantly praising for all these churches and then just saying, you don't know how much I've been praying for you. And uh, I want to, uh, that's my desire to uh, be like Paul in that regard, who's constantly um, not just interceding for the problems of the saints but, and for the growth of the saints, but also praising God uh, for the saints.